Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series making simple Flappy Robin for Cocos 2D, uh, sorry, for Android using Cocos 2D X version 3. Before we get started with this video, the main thing we want to do, which will be adding the Robin, I made a mistake inside these macros in cgamemanager.h. This set scale x should of course be a set scale, otherwise things will look a bit weird when we want to scale a node according to the y scale. So that fixes that. And before I get going with this code here, um, just to point something out in case it, it's it's not clear, the, I was having some uh, conversation with someone um, over the messaging about uh, using Eclipse and the fact that Eclipse doesn't seem to do very good autofill uh, when you're using C plus eleven, um, C plus plus eleven, sorry, uh, keywords like the new auto keyword here, for example, and. Um, one th the thing you can do is when you're developing this application, the whole point really of Cocos 2DX is it doesn't really matter when you're particularly inside the C++ code what IDE you're, you're using or anything because the idea is really to program all the C++ to a finished point and then you can start doing the platform specific stuff. So you really you would we'll, what we'll do in this series is, is get the app actually working and the game working as a complete whole and only then will we open up Eclipse and start actually dealing with the Android specific stuff. And in fact, if you look inside the um, project folder, which I'll just bring across here now inside the file browser, this is sort of the, the project folder that's created by Cocos 2 dx 3 And the point is, is all our classes go inside this classes folder. And then whichever project we then use, the same classes are then used to compile for that project. And it's only then, in the case of the Android, that we then add in, change the manifest and things like that, and add in our Java code on top of there to deal with the Android-specific stuff. So it's completely cross-platform because these classes files that we're making are used for every platform you're making, irrespective of what's been currently done now. And the reason I'm choosing to use Xcode, one, is because I quite like it, and two, particularly, as I've already explained, I can very quickly once setting the window size here inside the app delegate, I can very quickly change the resolutions and run the application without needing to run those on a simulator or buy 50 devices for Android to use to see what the different aspect ratios look like. Okay, so right then, onto this video. We want to add a Robin onto our screen. I've already added three Robin files into the resources. They'll be in the download with this video. And we'll do this inside Hello World scene, obviously. Now we could add the Robin in the manner that we've done here, but obviously um, that's not going to be a very good way of doing things because we'll need to access our Robin sprite later on because we'll want to move it when the screen is touched to make it jump up and down and also check whether it's collided with the floor or tubes or anything like that. So the first suggestion there of course is then we add in a private variable um, in this private section here of the Hello World class of a type sprite and then we uh, call this sprite our robin. Very good. The only thing is, I'll just put the Cocos 2D prefix in there, the only thing is with adding in a uh, sprite in this way is that, and there should be a pointer here, the only thing with adding in a sprite in this way is that we're going to need some other properties for the Robin as well. So during the game, we'll need to know various things like um, is it active or inactive in the state of game, game over or not game over. Um, it'll need to be able to reset its sort of speed when it's when the screen's initially touch and it starts its jump, and it'll need some kind of specific updates on it and some maths in there as well to make the jump look realistic when it's affected also by gravity, so when it rises and falls. All that means is essentially that we need more properties and things than are provided by the sprite. So what that means in essence is then is that we're going to subclass a sprite so we can get more out of our Robin. So what we're going to do is add a new class then to the project in whichever ID you're using in the, the normal way. I'm going to call it C Robin, and we can get on with uh, creating the main structure of this class. So the first thing I want to do then is I'm still inside Hello World here. I'm just going to copy that include, include cocos2d.h, and inside the header file, I'm going to take out this IO stream because we don't need it, and now just type out the class then. So I'm inside crobin.h, we've got class crobin, and we want to subclass then the public st uh, parts of sprite from the Cocos2D framework, like so. 
So that's our Robin class then available, and basically what this is saying, then we can do all of the stuff that we do with a sprite, so that's move it, run actions on it, initialize it with a picture uh, or an image, but then we can add some of the things ourselves as well. So in terms of what we want to add as private member variables, there are just two of them. Uh, both of them floats. One of them is called speed y, which will say how uh, what the current speed is of the robin in y, plus being up the screen, negative being falling, going down. And the other one is top of screen, and that's something we'll need much later on, but when we start making the robin jump, we want to make sure that the robin can, can't go off the top of the screen, otherwise the user can, player can cheat and basically get the robin to jump over the tubes and get a very nice score. In terms of public stuff then in the class, um, I'm going to do something a bit naughty here and just have basically a public member variable like this. Really I should write a getter and a setter but um, speed things up a little bit. So we'll have the state of the robin here and now that an important part is we're going to have a static which means remember it's not um, well you should know what a static function is but it's not part of an actual C robin object individually it's called by the C robin class and we're going to use this to create our robin. So this We'll call it create with file name and car pointer to file name. So this function here then will be used very much like we do in the hello world scene.cpp when we've got sprite create, except where you see Robin create with file name. So now we've done that, there are some more functions to write, which we won't be using in this video, but we might as well put in for future use. The first one is an update that takes a delta time argument, and that'll be called once every frame, hopefully 60 times a second. And that's what in there we'll use to update the position of the robin, depending on its velocity and the gravity. So it does this realistic jump and fall. We're going to have a reset function in there, which will be used to reset the robin when the game is over. Going to have set start speed, and all this does is basically when the robin is first touched, it has a starting velocity, and that velocity, so effectively speed y is set to that starting velocity, and each time it's updated, that velocity changes, it reduces because the robin slows down and eventually falls. So we call set start speed to set this speed y back to the original starting velocity. You'll see how that works later on. Um, then we want void set params. And that's a bit long-winded way to do some of these things. I wrote these functions out originally. Um, in fact, what we want here is an int and TOS for top of screen. That will make this a float, sorry. Now, and a const as well. Now, set params really, when I originally wrote the application, um, I was anticipating to have to add more parameters to the Robin in terms of expanding the game in the future. So I made a set parameters function, but the moment all this function will do is actually set this top of screen private variable. And another important thing that we need is we need a Kogos 2D rect, so a rectangle, and we need something called a tube collision box. And you'll see how what this is all about later on. I won't explain it for now, otherwise I'll be explaining everything multiple times in each, each video. And last but not least, uh, it's something that came apparent when I was doing the Cocos 2DX version 2 version of this application. Um, with the Microsoft compiler, you actually need to provide a default empty constructor if you're going to use one. So you need to actually specify one. It won't compile it implicitly for you. So I'll just supply this in this way as well. So now we've done that, we can jump into the implementation file, into crobin.cpp, and just, as always, first of all, add in the good old brackets. Like so. And I'll just remove these spaces, because that's not very nice looking. And the first, the most important, well, actually, we don't need to do anything in debate, re update, reset, we don't, set start speed, we don't, set params, we don't. Obviously, we have a problem inside um, this tube collision box because it's not returning anything. And the other thing I need to do, obviously, here is put the C Robin prefixed so that it knows that it belongs to the C Robin class as well. Otherwise, things aren't going to be very good. And I need to remove the static from here. So here what we'll return for now is we'll just return the bounding box for now. We'll, I'll deal with all this, as I said, later on. So it's a get bounding box, I think, with version 3. Yes, version 2 you should just have bounding box. Okay, so the file we want to deal with then in this video is this one. 
And the first thing we want to do is make a new Robin. Sprite equals uh, new C Robin. And that then creates our Robin using our empty constructor. And now we'll say that if we've actually created something, and, and now what we'll do is we'll say the sprite and init with file. Now this init with file, I've noticed, came up with a line through it there saying that it's actually deprecated. But I actually went and looked at the uh, init with um, at the, the constructor for a C sprite inside the classes provided in the framework. And inside there, the create function, so when I'm using this create here. I went to that, in fact I can jump now and show you, have a look at the definition for this. You can see that here is basically exactly the same thing done as what we're doing, uh, if sprite and sprite, and also init with file is used there. So I decided it was okay to use init with file in this project in this way, and you'll see that the code we're about to write is exactly the same. So we've got sprite and auto release, and then we return the sprite. And last but not least here, we have the CC uh, safe delete and sprite if something's gone wrong and we return uh, null pointer. So essentially that's exactly the same code as we've just seen except I've spelt return incorrectly. So just going back to the file we're in there, um, and I can't find it obviously now, I just right click and jump to definition again inside the framework, inside CC Sprite, we've written essentially exactly the same code, um, but just with our Robin, uh, C Robin class, rather than the Sprite. Okay then, so that now will return then a C Robin object, which subclasses Sprite. So into Hello World scene, we're now in the position where we can write out our Robin, but one more thing I want to do is inside here is just make a z-index for the Robin. It's okay, z-index Robin, and the Robin has priority over everything, so we'll give that a big z-index to give us some room in between of 100. And now let's set about uh, adding our Robin. So let's just scroll down a bit. We're going to get file name, and it's uh, Robin. Again, I've added the resources in already, make sure you do that for, if you have to, for whichever uh, IDE you have. And now we want to actually add a Robin as a private member variable. So what I'm going to do up here then is just say class C Robin here, so that the compiler knows what's going on. And I'll change this now to a Robin. And then inside hello world scene.cpp at the top, we can now include, please work until it sounds good, our C Robin dot h like so and now we're good to go. So I can say that our robin is equal to c robin and then we can call the create with file name and that of course is the file name. And then we'll set the position now of the robin just to go into the uh, middle of the screen. And what we also want to do is we want to scale the robin but we want to scale the robin only in the y direction. I'm just going to go into check the macro here that we need, it's scale node y indeed. And the reason we're doing that, I'll show you, explain why it's in the y direction when we actually run the application and show you the robin. So that's the robin created, the robin scaled, the robin positioned in the middle of the screen, and now we need to do is copy and paste this line to add the child to save a bit of time. And we can add the robin, whoops, I need to scale the robin, not the floor sprite, and also position the robin and not the background sprite. This is fatal copying and pasting, but it should save a bit of time. Okay, and add the robin, and we want obviously our KZ index robin. Good. So I just run the application, and hopefully we should have a robin in the middle of the screen, or a crash, one or the other. Okay, and here you can see we have a robin in the middle of the screen. Now, to talk about why we're only scaling in the y direction, hopefully you can see the cursor moving up and down here, rather than the x and y to keep um, the robin sort of proportion in terms of its width the same according to the aspect ratio. Well, the reason is, the thing that's critical for the gameplay is the gaps between the tubes relative to the size of the robin from top to bottom. That's the most critical thing. And therefore, Although we're going to scale in some stuff in the X direction as well, we're actually really only interested in terms of the gameplay in 
the Y direction, the scale we're using in the Y direction. So if you imagine if we were playing this game like this, but the screen was twice as wide, but exactly as high, you'd still want the Robin to have exactly the same height he has now, and the tubes to have exactly the same gap between them and stuff. Otherwise, the gameplay wouldn't be the same. The screen's twice as wide, so you see many more tubes on the screen, but that's irrelevant. The point is, what makes the gameplay is... The speed stuff scrolls across, obviously, but the what's happening, the size of the objects in the Y direction, that must always be the same proportion. So our tubes and things like that will all be sc scaled based on what we're scaling um, against the 640 with our Y scale, which is why we only scale the Robin according to the Y rather than our sort of scale factor. So hopefully that's cleared up why I'm using the scale node Y in that way. OK then, so one more thing we could probably do is position the robin maybe over to the left third of the screen. So we could say that it's actually uh, visible width divided by 3. And let's just run that and see if that looks a little bit better. Yep, that looks about about right. Maybe we'll collect it, uh, correct it later on. It's just to move the robin over to the left a little bit. In fact, I'm deciding as I'm looking at this now, maybe divided by four is a little bit better. I'll just run that again, just to keep the video running over as always. Okay, on our base resolution, the robin's sort of far enough over to the left. Okay then, so that's it for this video. We've got our robin added. We've subclassed our robin and added some functions in, which we'll flesh out in the future videos. And the basis of the game's really there. In the next video, we need to look at detecting touches and actually making the robin jump. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome, as always, on YouTube.